um, I think there was maybe about 12 of us at the time. So looks like it's grown, the, the track that is, so the program has grown. Did you have any questions? My visit here was very inspirational, it was very life changing. Mark Blanchard opened my eyes to a lot of things. Um, sorry, I'm a little teary eyed because he just died. He was one of my mentors. Aww. So, um, so, no, my experience here was a life changing experience. And he brought me to this school, and I went home immediately and applied to the program. You know, I just found out about it, and I was just so inspired by everything the educational system, the healthcare system, everything I saw. And I went home and I applied immediately. Um, I found out who I needed to go through, and uh, yeah, Mark Blanchard set up a lot of, wrote me a great recommendation letter, and went home and applied immediately. It just it was the right fit. I just really believed in what was going on here and the, the program, and I really was inspired by the amount of countries that are represented in this school that how is it that one of the poorest nations in the world is able to educate thousands and thousands of, um, of doctors and uh, including Americans and this was just like how is this possible so it was just the right fit for me and I was completely inspired by the whole my whole three months here so. Were you a pre-med major back in um, I majored in chemistry in fact <coughs> I hadn't really thought about studying medicine beforehand. I mean, it kind of crossed my mind, but I just had this more of a mental barrier just from the barriers I had um, um, uh, faced um, back home, cost of school, and just the the competitive nature of the of the medical system. And so, I really I was not a pre med major. Um, but I found an opportunity to do something that I believe was my calling, and that's why I choose to study medicine in Cuba. Otherwise, I don't think I would study medicine anywhere in the U.S. It just and then, now they say the obligation is to go back. So what happens to all of you? Do you go back and then take the boards? Do you take the medical boards and then, um, and then do a residency there? And the yeah, the idea is that we're, we're going back to work in our communities wherever the need is. Um, the school, um, we have a great support group um, organization called Medic based out of Oakland who are supporting us, providing us with mentors to help prepare us for the, for, for the board exams. Uh, last year, California finally approved ELAM for the, um, to be approved in California. So. Uh, yeah, so we'll do all our step testing. We're going back. Um, the grads, we've just had some graduates that have been placed in residencies, great programs all over great. the United States. Great. So this is just starting to happen. Great. What's the pass rate on the on the boards? Do you know? Um, I believe the pass rate is pretty high. I don't have an exact number. The information just hasn't been gathered and given to us, but. All the third and fourth year students that have taken it, um, their success rate has been very, very high. So you take it in the third or fourth year here, <coughs> and then and then if you pass, you still have several more years here. Yeah. Right? What they do is because the way the system is set up, that um, we take usually take the step one after the third year because usually I think in the U.S. system you take after the second year, but because the way the system is set up, we don't quite all have the material yet, so we wait till our third or fourth year to make sure that we do have all the material right, necessary. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Would you say that it's easier studying here even though you're not 100% Spanish speaker? Um, I think medical school in, in general is difficult. Um, I think it depends on how you immerse yourself in, in speaking Spanish. Uh, med medicine is a universal language. I think I study in Spanish and English. It's very doable. I didn't speak Spanish when I got here, but the school provides you. They teach you Spanish. They prepare you to succeed. And it, like I said, it just depends on how you immerse yourself in the language. But the, the professors are wonderful. They want you to succeed. I think I'm very impressed about just from being in my university experiences back in the States and being here, there's not that competitive uh, 
cutthroat, I'm going to be better than you attitude. Like you're here as a collective um, to to succeed, to support each other. If someone's not doing well in your group, like you have an obligation to help that person. Um, so there's no reason not to succeed in the program here. There's no reason. It's quite. I remember, I remember students in the U.S. telling stories about how classmates would try to undermine them by, <laughs> by doing things to, you know, change test grades or just really crazy things because they're so competitive and that anything to make somebody else look worse and you better they yeah, would do is like pretty the, crazy. The I just heard these bizarre yeah. stories. The curriculum, I mean, they want you to learn the material and that's yeah. amazing. Um, the way it's set up, we have written and or evaluation. And I always feel like when I'm able to explain something to someone, that means I really, I really know what I'm talking about. So the system just created so that you have a full understanding of what you're learning. What is the application process like? Um, if Passes for Peace does all the administrative um, parts of the application process for the U.S. students, uh, they have a website at cook.org, and I believe that. Um, ISCO.org, Pastors for Peace, and they do all the administrative stuff for the application process. Um, so if you're interested, you can apply through them. And it has, they'll send you in for a packet and a list, you know, gives you more details about the program. Is there anyone specific that we have to speak to or just going to that website? Um, to the website, if you call the office, you I think you'll either speak, speak with Sheila or Moppy, Moppy, and they're really great with applicants. They'll get your address, send you a packet if you're interested. Uh, for for this program, uh, no, the, it's a full scholarship. The Cuban government provides full scholarships. Yeah, I know. How is it possible, right? Um, the only commitment you have is to go back and work in an underserved. That's just a more and but once you're trained here, like you, you're trained to be a doctor for the world. Like you just wouldn't. Why would you do anything else? But you know, work where there is a need. So and it's great too. Like I, it's so amazing. I'm gonna have thousands and thousands of dollars of debt when I graduate. I I don't have to be motivated by financial factors to work in you know some residency program where I have to be forced to sacrifice my own personal goals or how I want to practice medicine because I have this financial burden over my head. Do you have loans from undergraduate? Like, do you, is there a... Everybody has loans. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't have loans. Some people don't, they've been able, I don't know how, but um, I just keep having to defer it for financial reasons. There's a, works in the process to get an official ID number to get them deferred for educational reasons. That's all being worked on by Congress right now. But don't let that defer you because, I mean, I don't know, it's not important. <laughs> um, there, you can be any age. Um, I think there's some certain minimum requirements that IFCO has for applicants. Uh, basic sciences, um, they want you to have bio, chemistry, math, all the pre-med courses. Um, as far as age, there's no age minimum. They say 30 is the maximum, but there have been some exceptions, and there have been very few exceptions. So they want you to. Yeah, eight year olds. So they want you to have had a lot of the undergrad courses in the sciences, right? The pre-med courses, the um, chemistry, biology, mm -hmm. and all those things. Okay. Yeah, and there are have people that you know that didn't major in the sciences, majored in history. We have people from former teachers to you know who didn't study the sciences, but if you have somewhat of background. Some people just went to JC to take the requirements. Mm. So 
you're able to do that. You don't have to have a college degree. I mean, it is something to help in the process, but you don't. A uh, college degree is not necessary. So just the two-year basics is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we have quite a few students that do not have college degrees who are doing very well in the program. What's the culture like within the school? Like, it's so amazing. You're probably meeting people from all over the world. Oh my goodness! I didn't even before I got here. So um, the culture within the school it's it's beautiful. I mean, there's countries from all over Latin America, the Caribbean, Africa, we have students from now from Pakistan, um, and I'm just, all, like I was sitting in one of my classes and I was just amazed how I would not have the same experience in medical school in the U.S. I'm in a class with, you know, from Paraguayans, Uruguayans, uh, Colombians, Ecuadorians, and we're all sharing our histories, our own experiences in a class. And there's things that I'm learning, not just about medicine, but just about life that I would never have learned. I wouldn't learn that in the U.S. So I think that's profound. And the cultural, it's a little bit of a, a younger culture, but at the same time, they're going to be doctors. I mean, there's 17 year olds here in their first year of medical school from going to be working in their indigenous communities by the time they're 20 to, uh, 24. So, yeah, the culture is amazing. It's, it's amazing. So, what about just transitioning from the United States to the United States? I know we've all had our own adjustments to the many abroad but I know that that's how we can do it. It's great that you have a student. Yeah, when I studied, when I lived, um, I guess you are all living with Maria and Chino and everyone. Um, so I came here thinking, you know, Mark Lynch prepared us to think of Cuba, you know, to uh, poor nation. I get here and I we go to the beautiful residency, right? And I think this is this is rough in it, right? And then there's this other Cuba. Like it is nice that you get this experience of Cuba, but that Cuba living in the residency is not Cuba, like. Um, my experience is completely different from the experience I had living. Yeah, I had some immersion in the Cuban culture, but it's this, uh, it's like this quasi uh, tourist, quasi Cuban experience. It's not, you have the safeguards of living in a 14th floor penthouse, which is not Cuba. So, to be frank. <laughs> But no, as far as my life now, it's very, it's adaptable, and humans are great. They're the most giving. Uh, and just the culture is amazing. Like if you don't have anything, humans have less of those two, you still give you the shirt off their back. It's, that's pretty profound. So I don't think that anything adjust is it worth adjusting if you're interested in the program. So yeah, you don't have the comforts of all American things, but if you have a, an idea of what you want to do, it's not important.